This is a chapbook called uh, Invisible Sleep, published by um, Michael Ballard and Sonny Lynn Thibodeau. Um, it is extremely rare, yet there are copies in this room. Um, this is the only thing, this isn't really through the register, so if you want one of these, uh, slip my code 5 or slip me a 5 or something like that. But extremely rare. It's got a cover by Marie Wilson, who is a, uh, a still living, about 91 year old uh, surrealist artist, uh, originally from uh, Cedarville, yeah, yeah, Cedarville, California, now lives in Athens with a uh, surrealist poet, Namos Valerius. And uh, um, card calendar card-carrying surrealist from the uh, the uh, actual Parisian group and uh, still uh, still with us today. Uh, great uh, picture called The Poet's Head. This poem is called Avid Diva. Avid Diva, visit me. Dispense divine advice or radiant deviant. Evidence of violence rivets my vivid dive. Addictive desire violates me. Drives my rivers in reverse. Revives my velvet revolution. Revs my vacuum cleaner that died. Veils my veins with unbelievable sleeves. Divides evening into eternities laced with invisible sleep. My values go viral, my valves on vacation, my vultures counterclockwise. They prey on my vices, the liver rippers. The wind invents voices on the wing to whisper vivid prayers above my vibrating window. Listen, avid diva, I have a hive nearby I invite you to, a hovel I've chosen close to the oval of love. Run up my vacant stairs, invade my ventilation shaft and fill my vats with quivering liquid. Video my eldest selves in silver Levi swiveling, vote in my next direction. Save me, avid diva, in the dance of the broken arm. Advocate for the victim who avoids your eyes to envision the void devour his heart. Provoke my vital signs. I survived just in time for you to give it to me, leaving me heaving in tears of repulsive beauty. I'm not Vegas or Jesus. I'm recovering belief in the everyday rave against time. Days I want to live, days I want to die, days I'm the luckiest man alive. Hypnagogic Boston. By the little screen where I lie with the dogs and live with no drugs and ponder the ponderosa. Beneath this heat where my flaming feet repeat the steps I missed the first last time around, the lossless ratio stations itself on guard against the d density of imperfected memories. I send postcards abroad to Mr. and Mrs. God, asking if clarity begins at home and hope the answer is no. I know the script's too cryptic to decipher aboard this floating horse. Tell the doctor when to expect my corpse to arrive by a riverboat, solely befitting my dignity. <clears throat> this is called Paul Schierbart, who is a sort of a German expressionist, futurist uh, author. Uh, and uh, he's been translated recently by Andrew Joran, another spotlight author. And uh, this is uh, dedicated to Andrew. I wandered the impossible in search of perpetual motion. The protagonist of my novel was glass architecture. I went broke from agonistic loves. I mourned the books I never wrote, a handbook of the foot, an insider's guide to bullshit. My technical treatise on paper plates would have run 4,000 pages, but only sold one copy, because I'd lose my author copy. What I wrote about didn't exist, but you couldn't make me up. My mustache waxed and waned, Gravy stains buttoned my coat long after food became memory. Sadly, I was mistaken on the dirigible's endurance, but I pretty much called skyscrapers an aerial bombardment. Here I am in the past a futurist, a steampunk with dry heaves and a gutter percher gutter. In my last glass act, I wrote my assassin's name on fogged up pince nez and flung them away with transparent childlike grace. They evicted the man behind my beard. He tickled. Love is made of sky. Love is a movie we watch ourselves in, a film we watch ourselves in. A sky that looks askance at the lack of scandalousness and even the most licentious thought. The song of the beleaguered dispatcher herding taxis together, or the hiss of inflatable ramps sliding down desire. Love is a cloud in the sky that's also love. 
I remember today like it was yesterday. I open a door and then there stands Love, ready to get down, and I'm like, whoa, we just met. And Love's like, I don't care. Love has a history of such indiscretions. A baby wailing on an electric five-string banjo during a piano recital in the library of a red-eye flight to Boston could no more disconcert than Love when Love comes to town on a fine Arab charger or even a Budweiser Clydesdale. Love drives whatever it wants and frankly prefers something furrier than the average fuzzy dice. The velvet cheesesteak apple pie of the snowbound Vermont mind is dismissed by Love as it's missing the point of its needle, its flawless tenderness and penchant for cool appraising stares below the roof of its wool hat horizon. Love instead noodles Nile Delta blues at 79 RPMs. The RPGs of Love explode at the antipodes of St. Dove Island and Carnal Canal, for Love wreaks magic havoc with the music of public life. Love loves it when Love does it because Love is a moonlit boxing glove giving the finger to violence. The sky we look upon that tumbles and falls in a bright blue sun in the sky. Love is a risky sky. This is called The Chosen, which is dedicated to David Meltzer. When two of us meet, we know one another by insight, by the brew we rock the quicksilver with, or the weird supper we offer ourselves in a mirror of single minds. The way our fingers twitch around improvised amulets, the signet burnt on our sunburst guitars, or the altitude inside our supine attitude. A ghost of uncertain courtesy sets aside its side to admire the view. Animals strike curious poses. Posers see and taste and hate. They feel the heat of two of us meeting. When two of us meet, we've known ourselves all along, an infinite unforgetting of the time another two of us met. We are only part of us. The rest is an ego ago, adrift in a silent age. We burn the candle straight down the middle. A moment is a table we pull up chairs to, to look with naked eye upon eternity. <clears throat> it's called The Hydropathic Way, for Cedar and Micah. I need another song today, something to sing to the boys at the bar to thank them for being there. The more I fold the petals of the brass rope rose called my life, the more I sense their drunk abundance in five minute phone calls and handsome ransom notes. When I'm hammered on the anvil underfoot, they reintroduce that discontinued line of goods long enough to stop my shelves for a spell. I pull up in a coffin but skate away on silver blades to the cathedral of our next encounter already being built. I try to leave the hard stuff back at the mausoleum but their whiskey holds the key to the city, whistling nonchalantly. Maybe just this once again, I'll bend the tawny brim, but only in August company. If I were an 11th century Japanese prince, I'd write it on pearl white paper and fix springs of fur to the envelope and send it off and retire dignified to the garden and I'd look to the sky and the cold would sting my wide open eyes. Instead of my macking at 1 a.m., I slip like turrets, taking a shot at the phone with the ammo of memory. But the song says they're in my hair, and that's a good look for me. So that's uh, a taste of uh, invisible sleep. Uh, I wanted to read a couple of poems from the uh, the collected poems of Phil Lamantia, which is uh, hot off the presses from uh, UC Press, and uh, which I co-edited with uh, Andrew Jorn and Nancy Joyce Peters, and uh, it's pretty goddamn good. It's a really great book, uh, and uh, it's a uh, it's a it's an unreal feeling to uh, to have it out here from. Let's see if we find this one poem. It's called uh, "Cool Apocalypse." Cool is the seed of the wind. Cool is wind with breasts of sky. Cool is cool. Forever your eyes looking at me when I was cool as the scene could be. Cool is the Empire State. Make it as cool as the old Chrysler. Cool is for the invisible police as they materialize into the gorgons of Ghent. Cool is for the atom bomb when it doesn't go off. Cool is for my bombs going off. Cool, cool, cool. On every floor, up on your lips of rain and shine. Cool, stand cool, cool. Cool I'm made and cool I'll flow through bill billows hanging over the cool streams of ink and snow where it drips with delight. High as a mountain, cool as cocaine. Cool is the greatest high. Cool as the point the Arabs surround you with. Cool talk like thousands of leaves of grass, cool like miles, cool like conmen returning you your money, cool like Prez dying for Ike, 
who like the first Inca prince of these states? Who is the magician at work, he that maketh the stone? Who is the poet who hangs up all time to see? Who is he who digs the holy sea? And again, cool life, life, greatest cool I know, Jesus. Greek words come in, Russian icons instead of the movies. Cool new instruments to bring you on. Cool daddy -o, circulator of the light, coolest dove. Cool this poem as it comes to that coolestness where I confesseth forth, where I confesseth, confesseth forth the unspeakable. when he was uh, 17 years old, I think. So it's uh, kind of uh, amazing to me. It's called, To You, Henry Miller, of the Orchestra, the Mirror of the Revolver, and of the Star of Stars. <laughs> on entering the house on the street suffering from heartaches, I encounter you. A little to the right of the parasol, a little over the phonograph record with yellow fans, a little like two dice and a hatchet. You mingle with women who have lost their wounds in the smoke. Insidiously walking down the spacious hallway where red bandanas wave hello, my sweet bucket of excrement crisscrosses you all the way. Under my foot at noon, when we have just bitten glass walls, just when my head is swimming in a pyramid in Mexico, just at that time you crawl forth, reading a parable for no reason at all, but pass away. The iron rust of your face wants love, only love, not a smell of infested testicles. But what is this host of children anyway? It interrupts our hunting. The old women who are producing altars of morphine. So the windows shine forever at the top of your head. Forever the madmen are excused from the dinner table. Wave goodbye. Your friend is waiting for you. He's secreting a blue fluid from his ear which spells out in the sky, esoteric Buddhism. <laughs> Don't worry. Rats hide in the night soil where the old men's beards grow as strong as a priest in the sun with his clean-shaven face and gasoline. Forget me, forget me tomorrow. The virgin will prove wholesome, wholesome under the sea. Rain on her all the gorgeous animals. Have them nestle close to her hymen. What I have related is written on the wall. You talk from the depths of this drunken vocabulary. What does this mean? What does anything mean? It is worth beating the floor of the palace with your muscles. Oiled and soaked in the magic wines, your body will be preserved for the hawks who love you dearly. From morning to midnight, they remember you and shower you with scented vapors. Until you regard yourself with suspicion, your attacks on the aerial child will not end, and dung will continue to fall over the child's lips. But wash your thighs, priceless in the prison cell, when you squeeze out the liquid with horses. A little too dry, you cling to the building and watch the mist shooting balls into the sky. Don't let the amphibious wife strangle you without a nightgown. The police might suspect her of hiding in the thunder, where the gulls ride over the silk stockings you stole in Paris ten years ago. To raise a beard on your ear will take centuries, so release the wristwatch from your matchbox and enter the plate where women ask no questions. The umbrella is alarmed. Don't have it spring on you with its platinum mouths and hat of blood-ridden fur. It sings to the vile eggs in the garden, which silently creep in into your lake to melt away. And as sweat pours from your eyes to change into salt, the gates fashioned from your children's bones are swung open to release the telephone of cement to disclose the statues walking at midnight, inducing you to fly into the rubber castles of the sun. It's called Garrett Capel's Rides Again. <laughs> <laughs> my concealed carry personality has deformed my trouser contents. To the extent my permit permits, I'm shooting off often in public. I'm a blow dart in a wind tunnel, aimed in the wrong direction. A boycotted Russian vodka distiller, an ass dial away from arrest. I'm that bad Molly going around on the business end of fucking up. That's me in the glass in her office, telling beads on the heads of my foes. Is it genderqueer to be a femme in such an aggressive asshole? Same bat time, same bat channel, but the cosplay is a satin hassle. You'd think my years in a boy band would inure me to humiliation, but this brat wears from the king is the only thing keeping me. Was I going to stay alive? Was I going to stay in and get things done? Or stand in line for a cronut at my age in this tax bracket? They said bananas could get you high. They said lyric poems had to die. They said toilet seats could give you STDs, and lick on tattoos were really LSD. 
The reek of the schoolyard sister and haunts today's items of piety just as readily. But to me, the poetry only grows under such conditions as to hold the candle up to the album to illuminate the grooves. Every time the bucks go clattering, I go numbering their hooves in this inexplicable ritual of anthropologizing up over this 200-year-old carpet of cigarettes. I'm ready for my auto-tune, Dr. Luke. I'm ready to head to Toluca Lake to watch the ghost of flappers float over the lawn of the Hope Estate while it's still for sale. Where once I was cuckoo for cocoa puffs, I'm afraid I've gone apeshit for grape nuts today. I've only got so many colons to lasso your heart away. <laughs> <laughs>